Okay, in this video we're going to look at another spring mass problem. And so we're given values for m, c, and k. So we'll put those into our basic model for a spring mass system. But the thing that's different about this example as opposed to the prior examples is that we have this external forcing function. So that's going to be this term here in the differential equation. So, all right, let's go ahead and write down the differential equation. So our m is 1. So we'll have 1y double prime. And our c is 4. So we'll have 4y prime. And our k is 8. So plus 8y equals. And then our external forcing function, uh, 10 cosine of 8t. And our, our object is released from rest at equilibrium. So our initial condition, our initial position is zero since we are at equilibrium position. And from rest, so the initial velocity is also zero. Okay, so we need to solve this differential equation. And I'm going to write down a little bit of those steps, but just in order to save some space, I'm not going to write out every step for solving that differential equation really want to focus on the meaning of what we get when we solve that differential equation. So we should notice that we have a second order linear differential equation with constant coefficients and non-homogeneous since this right hand side has a function that's not just the zero function. So we're going to start by finding the homogeneous solution and then we'll find a particular solution and we'll add those together. So this is the form of our general solution. Once we've done that, then we can plug in our initial values and find our C1 and C2, and we can find our particular solution that satisfies the initial conditions. All right, so to find the homogeneous solution, we know that we're going to be solving as if this equation were equal to zero. We've been doing that for a while now. You're going to use a characteristic polynomial. So your characteristic polynomial would be 1 times r squared plus 4r plus 8 equals 0. And then depending on the roots of this characteristic polynomial, that tells you the form of your yh. So probably use quadratic formula, maybe complete the square. This one I would probably use quadratic formula to solve. You should get r equals negative 2 plus or minus 2i when you use quadratic formula to solve that. So you might pause the video, try that quadratic formula, make sure that you get that same value. If not, double check your quadratic formula work. All right, so that tells you the general form of your yh solution, c1 e to the negative 2t cosine 2t plus c2 e to the negative 2t times sine 2t. All right, so that gives us part of our solution to the differential equation. I then need to find the particular solution. So I need to use one of the methods that we've talked about for finding that. Um, so this is one that is going to work pretty well for using the method of undetermined coefficients. So for finding the yp, uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that part of the work up here. We're going to make a guess. And we're going to make our guess based on the form of the right-hand side of this differential equation. So we think about the function cosine of 8t and all of its derivatives, which are different scalar multiples of cosine of 8t and sine of 8t. So our guess, this is undetermined coefficient, a cosine of 8t plus b sine of 8t. We should double check to make sure that nothing in our particular solution, none of these functions here in this guess show up here in the solution for the homogeneous. So I don't need to make any modifications to my guess here. So that's the appropriate guess. I would go ahead and find the first and second derivatives, y prime and y double prime, substitute them into the differential equation, and y in, group my like terms. I end up solving a little system of equations. I'm going to skip that. We did that before. I'm using undetermined coefficients if you need to look that up. And we end up with um, 
A equals negative 750 seconds and B equals 1 13th. Okay, so there's some algebra of solving a system. You can use your matrix function on your calculator to solve that system, so that should be no problem there. Okay, so there's your A and your B. So that gives our form here for our general solution. So we can now write down our general solution for the differential equation. So from our homogeneous solution, And then we're going to add to that what we get from this part here. So I'm going to have to go on to another line because this is a 52, 7 over 52, uh, cosine of 80. This is a long one, plus 1 13th sine of 8t. All right, so I do have some initial values here. So we can plug in t equals 0 and set this equation equal to 0. Right, so the sine of zero is zero, so these sine terms will drop out. We'll just be left with the cosine terms. And then find my y prime and also plug in the initial value there. So I can solve for my C1 and C2. Um, we will get that C1 is 750 seconds and C2 is negative 950 seconds. Okay, so we know how to do that. We've done that algebra before. You're just finding some derivatives and then you've got a system of equations. You can use the matrix feature on your calculator to solve that system of equations. All right, so at that point, uh, we've got our general solution here with all of our constants. So I wanna talk a little bit about what this represents. E to the negative two t times cosine two t minus 950 seconds e to the negative 2t sine 2t and then plus our other part here all right so i want to talk a little bit about what this solution represents and what the different parts of this solution are so this part from the homogeneous part notice that i've got periodic motion caused by the sine and cosine function, but with a decreasing amplitude. This e to the negative 2t, that is a coefficient on both that cosine and sine term, is going to approach zero as t gets larger. So as t goes to infinity, but it'll also get close to zero pretty fast. So this part of the solution is going to die out fairly quickly. as t gets larger. This is the part of the solution that we would call the transient solution. Transient, meaning it doesn't last long, it doesn't stick around too long. Uh, and so, after a little while, when the part, the exponential decay function that is causing the amplitude on these oscillations to die out, after a little while and those die out, the solution eventually will approach just this part. Right? So this part will approach zero, the overall solution will approach this part, and that's called our steady periodic solution. So y will approach this value, that's the particular part of the solution, as t approaches infinity. So the overall solution will approach this because this other part here will die out. Um, so a couple things to think about with that, sort of how long does it take for this one to become negligible? You could look at some graphs to think about that. You could determine uh, from some uh, numerical calculations about when this amplitude gets below a certain value uh, so that you can kind of see when that dies out. Um, but the other thing I want to say about that too, the, this is perfectly fine to leave your solution like this if you're just trying to solve the differential equation and think about the solution 
Uh, I would maybe ask you to identify the parts of the solution that die out when T gets larger. Right, so the key here is this exponential decay causing these parts to die out. What happens eventually to the solution that it approaches this? So I would ask you some concept questions about that. In the My Math Lab homework, when it asks for solutions, sometimes it will accept solutions like this. Sometimes it wants you to use some trig identities to rewrite some things in terms of uh, a slightly different form. So just be aware of that, that occasionally in the My Math Lab homework, it wants you to use that trig identity, uh, which we had in our class notes that says A cosine of omega t plus B sine of omega t is equal to C cosine of omega t plus phi, where C is the square root of A squared plus B squared. Pythagorean theorem there. And this omega, uh, there's a couple ways to think about that, but uh, the, that omega satisfies the equation cosine, uh, sorry, not omega, phi, cosine phi equals A over C, or sine phi is B over C, or you can combine that to get one for tangent, tangent phi is B over A, so you can use one of these to find that phi, that phase angle. There are a couple things in the online homework where it specifically asks you to put answers in this form. So you would do all this work that we did here and then just put the numbers in to figure out your C and your phi so that you have that phase angle. The more important thing to me than churning through all those calculations is that you understand what this solution represents, what the different parts of it mean in terms of the motion of the object, right? Eventually, this object is gonna be oscillating with a period of two pi over eight, or a frequency of eight over two pi. Uh, and then you can think about the amplitude of those oscillations by using this formula here. C is square root of A squared plus B squared. Uh, where this would be your A and your B. And so you could think about the amplitude of those eventual oscillations when T is small and close to zero. This part is also gonna have an impact on the solution, but as T gets a little bit larger, this part dies out. All right, so try some homework. Don't get too hung up in the calculations. Be sure that you're also thinking about what those different parts of your solution mean, what they represent in terms of the motion. On an exam, I'm probably gonna ask questions more like that because these calculations are kind of gross and messy and take a long time and are hard to do without a calculator. So on an in-class part of an exam, I'm gonna ask more about interpreting your responses and your answers. On a take-home part of an exam or something else like that, I might ask you to go through these calculations, but use a calculator to get through kind of the, the number crunching part of that. So focus on the interpretation though. My math lab homework will ask you for answers, but I want you also to think about the interpretation of what that means.